Uh, our next speaker is president of the Seasteading Institute, which is a nonprofit dedicated to building new societies in international waters uh, and exploring the ocean as a frontier for new social and political systems. Uh, if you could please give a warm welcome to Michael Keenan as he's setting up. It's not supposed to look like that. Yeah. Who here has, uh, are we ready? Um, well, it's, it's, let's see. It's one two, four by seven. You know, it's fine. They're all the other rest of the slides are fine. Thanks. Hi, who here has heard of seasteading and know, knows what it's all about? As most of you, it looks like. Okay, I will quickly run through what, we, what problem we are solving and how we're solving it uh, and spend a lot of time on questions so you can take this in the direction you want to go. I used to write for my student magazine and write letters to the editor and to my local politicians and I put up campaign uh, posters and I'd vote. Uh, and I tried to impose my ideology on everyone in my country and persuade them of this. Now that's, it was a democratic country, it was actually New Zealand, that's fine, uh, that's the system that New Zealand has. Uh, but I never noticed how weird it is that implicit in the system of democracy is that there is one government for everyone, there's, there's one ideology that we should be following, we just need to figure out what it is. We don't have that system for any other uh, product or service in our lives. We don't all wear the same clothes or drive the same cars or eat the same food. Why must 300 million people all have the same government, federal government in this case? Now that's perhaps a little glib. There's a moral aspect to government and uh, we hold some truths to be self-evident uh, that we have some inalienable rights, among them our life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and that we must not carry more than 3.4 ounces of liquid on an aircraft and that marijuana must be prohibited, and marriage is between a man and a woman. Some of these are, of course, not self-evident. Some of them are very controversial. Imposing the same government on 300 million people isn't just inhumane and unnecessary, it also limits progress. Every year, our cars get safer, our computers get faster, phones get smaller, and our medical technology gets more advanced. But we still use the same government technology that we've had for 250 years with minor modifications. And this is not because we have figured out the best way that government, the best government we can possibly have. We, we see a Congress approval rating at 9%. We can do better. To progress in any domain, uh, we need to find new ways of doing things that work better. And to do that, we must experiment. It's how we make a progress in science, and it's how we make progress in uh, d business and technology. Startups are experiments, and when they fail, you learn what doesn't work, and, and that's fine. Um, that's helpful, and when they do work, sometimes they change the world. So if we look at government as entrepreneurs, we can analyze it with economics, and we see that there are retailers called countries with uh, consumers called citizens, uh, and uh, it's providing a service called governance. This is an industry legendary for poor performance. The market leader had revenues of $2.2 trillion in 2010 and lost $1.3 trillion. That was one of the leading players in the industry. The worst governments kill many of their own consumers. Why are governments so awful? They're all monopolies. They're monopolies at the local level and they exist in the global uh, system of large monolithic entities that uh, have very little competition for uh, customers. Uh, it's almost impossible to start a new government. Uh, you must win a war or election or revolution. And it's very difficult to switch between governments. Uh, you must leave your family and friends and culture and language potentially. Face whatever immigration barriers your country puts behind you. Face whatever immigration barriers your new country puts ahead of you. Uh, if you're American, your government will still tax you wherever you are, 
uh, if your income is over $92,000, I think it is. So in Silicon Valley, where the Seasteading Institute is based, we like to disrupt old uh, sclerotic, inefficient, slow-moving uh, industries with fast-moving, uh, flexible new businesses with new ideas. And what industry is more ready and more deserving of, govern of disruption than government? So this is a business opportunity. It's a large business opportunity. Government is 30% of world GDP. Uh, a startup country could be the world's first trillion dollar business. But there's no way to enter the government industry. Uh, all the existing land is taken. It's all claimed by existing governments. And so we come to seasteading, settling the high seas. We need a new space, a new place for government, uh, for political experiments. The next frontier is the ocean, and with a little technical innovation to open this frontier, we can unleash enormous political innovation. We can let a thousand nations bloom on the high seas and create a startup sector for government. You don't need to be out there to benefit. Just as in any industry, the innovations of the market leaders will be copied by the rest of the market. If they, uh, the slower they are to copy, the, the further they'll fall behind. And the worst ideas won't be copied and won't be scaled up. Russia tried a new political idea last century, transformed itself into the Soviet Union, and killed, it, uh, killed over 20 million people. They should have tried it on a smaller scale first. And it's not just that uh, the, the worst ideas will be obviously bad and therefore not copied. Uh, the worst ideas will actually uh, was, uh, actively uh, damage and harm the, the societies that try them. Uh, and because they're in the system where people can leave sea states and go to others and, and rejoin land if they want to, uh, then uh, unlike a large country like America where you can have a bad idea and it can persist for decades, uh, the uh, harm will be apparent very quickly. So we can demonstrate our ideas instead of arguing about them. And we can compete with governments rather than complaining about them. This is uh, Hong Kong as it was and Hong Kong as it is. We have many of these examples, uh, West and East Germany, North and South Korea, uh, Hong Kong and China, uh, or Hong Kong's past. And we see the huge impact that different systems have on, uh, on the soci societies of very similar people. Imagine many floating Hong Kongs off the coast of America, Hong Kongs that you visit and your friends visit. Instead of arguing about some uh, utopian idea that you or your friend might have, uh, you can go out and visit and show them that this, this place they visited is how America could be. And we don't need to impose our views upon everyone, nor accept the impositions of others upon us. There is no one ideology that works for every human. My political opponents are not wrong, they're just different. Some of them are wrong, <laughs> but some are different. At the Seasteading Institute, we're growing our community of pioneers and conducting research into the political, business, and engineering challenges of seasteading. The first wave of seasteading is happening right now. It, it, uh, it consists of uh, single-purpose businesses uh, that will prove that uh, it's possible to live and work on the ocean and be su sustainable, and I don't mean self-sufficient, but sustainable uh, as in uh, trading with other nations uh, for, for, uh, and proving that you can make money on the ocean. In a few years after that, if these businesses are successful, uh, we'll see custom-built platforms like uh, you see in these images, and uh, they'll provide a variety of, of businesses. And then in a few years, a few decades perhaps, uh, true floating cities with hundreds of thousands or millions of people on the ocean experimenting with a wide variety of political and social systems. It's urgent that we get these experiments started as soon as possible. Today's governments are increasingly outdated and unable to cope with uh, new problems like managing intellectual property law and old problems like uh, balancing a budget. We need to find the next generation of government technologies and the generations after that. We need financial systems that survive the inevitable uh, financial crises, uh, regulations, that, uh, regulations or other systems that protect people without hindering economic progress or, and technological progress. And we need political systems that cater to citizens and don't neglect or abuse them. The role of the Seasteading Institute is uh, not to set policies for seasteads. Uh, we create the platform upon which uh, 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 
we create the platform upon which the, the entrepreneurs of, of the seasteading movement uh, can go out and create new seasteads in new countries. We don't set the policies for the, them. That is the, the role of the nation founders and the entrepreneurs. People ask, are you out to create a libertarian seastead? The answer is yes, and a liberal one, and a conservative one, a futarchical one, an anarchist one. Menchus Moldberg, if you saw his talk, can go create his fascist dictatorship one. Uh, we can try them all. Uh, and if people are free to join, if we leave, uh, then we see the experimentation. Did someone laugh? You'd have to ask Moldbug, but if you're worried about that, don't join. <laughs> um, there are business opportunities. Medical tourism is a, is a good one. Uh, uh, there's, uh, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Americans will travel all over the world, as far as India, all over South America, Thailand, Taiwan, many other countries for treatments that are much cheaper overseas or that have not been approved by the FDA. Uh, aquaculture, the farming of fish is a big one. Uh, there's a group called the Ocean Stewards Institute, which is a, basically a trade organization for the mariculture industry uh, that we're in contact with. And they have uh, so much trouble with government regulation that they, they really like our ideas. Um, and uh, uh, they, they have these uh, projects in progress. Uh, tourism of all kinds, knowledge work of all kinds, programming, graphic design, writing. Um, anything over the phone, uh, legal advice, psychotherapy, customer service, uh, technical support. Uh, I've got four minutes left and I want to do two questions. So there are engineering challenges. If you're interested, ask me about them. There are legal challenges. Ask about that. There are threats like piracy and navies and governments. We can talk about that. Uh, humanity needs seasteading. And seasteading needs creative driven people like the people at this conference to uh, spread the word, uh, support the movement, and pioneer the high seas. We particularly need entrepreneurs with a vision to see the way the world ought to be and the, uh, the drive to make that into reality. We have a conference coming up in June for investors and entrepreneurs. So if you or anyone you know would, would be interested in starting a seasteading business, uh, that's going to be held in San Francisco from May 31st to June 2. I have uh, cards and information about that with me. Uh, Charlie uh, Dice, staff writer at the Seasteading Institute, is also someone you can ask about, uh, about seasteading. And the next speaker, Max Marty, is a seasteading entrepreneur, and you can ask him too. Uh, there's a festival um, called Ephemeral uh, that has like a huge overlap with, with the Bill crowd. Uh, I'm meeting a lot of people that I met at Bill uh, it's for it's basically Burning Man on the water. There's a talk about that at 6 p.m. Uh, and we have started a new student research program. So if you're a student and, or you know someone who is a student, uh, talk to them if they'd like to do uh, research on uh, the legal engineering or business challenges of seasteads. We have two and a half minutes left for questions. Question is, if it's successful, would the US government shut it down as soon as it became a threat to the tax base? Uh, yes, we worry a lot. Uh, it's actually my, my biggest worry that I worry about most of the time is uh, the reaction of the US and other governments. Uh, people suggest things like, can we do a drug haven like Amsterdam? I have no ethical problem with that, but uh, I think you would uh, draw the attention of the United States government very quickly. Also, just because you're doing things that won't be taxable in, in a lot of cases, um, when you're in international waters, uh, the US government might have a problem with that. But there is precedent. Um, there are uh, ships like gambling ships that have done things in international waters. Uh, uh, and also the other thing is being shut down for this peaceful activity can look really bad. We get approached by reality TV shows all the time, people who want to do documentaries. We're talking about a bunch of photogenic people uh, with American accents who are on TV all the time. And if they're attacked by the United States, then um, that would be a very high profile case. Doesn't mean it can't happen. And it, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we worry about that. Yes. This sort of ties back to the, um, the fascist uh, seastead. Is, how do you keep any of these from becoming, from being corrupted and you know, people suddenly being stuck on an island in the middle of the ocean because the few have taken over and made decisions for the many that the many didn't want? The question is, uh, oh, did everyone hear it? Uh, how, if there was a fascist di dictatorship seastead, um, how do you, uh, how come it might not? I see. Or, or if one turned into it, uh, a mutiny perhaps, or a coup. Um, 
uh, that, okay, we're talking about creating new countries and that can happen to any country. It could happen to America um, uh, if, if there's some large social collapse. Uh, by increasing uh, competition between governments uh, and diversity of governments, perhaps uh, you might, basically we will improve the quality of governments uh, because competition tends to do that in the India industry. Uh, could the bad things happen? Yes. I, I like the idea, I mean government very broadly, uh, so any kind of organization, organizing of systems of people, um, I would love to see that try. I can take more questions over there and behind. Hi. Or there. Hi. Um, so I, like all, I like all your ideas. I was wondering about the actual C part though, in terms of practicality, Could, would it be possible instead to lease or buy some sort of autonomous zone from some existing country that would be happy to have the same amount of funds? We've looked into that and in fact there's this movement called Charter Cities led by the economist Paul Romer that has been trying to persuade developing nations to section off parts of their territory as special economic zones. Uh, similar I guess to Hong Kong under British rule, although that was not um, consensual on the part of, of China. Uh, Honduras has actually passed a series of laws enabling this. Um, so uh, there's a company, Future Cities Development, which is actually by the, pre the, the founder of the Sea Sitting Institute, is the CEO of that, and uh, they are doing exactly that. But the opportunities for it are very limited. 